Hey everyone, I have got a really fun video for you. It's all farmhouse and it's five project under $5. And I'll tell you more about that playlist in a minute. So we've got one of these boards. I got it at a thrift store and it was two pieces and it was two for $5.99. So I'm counting this as only $3. And I combined these two wood tents. One is walnut, one is gray and you didn't really need to do that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my Chocotour surface wax and I am gonna just apply it all over. I used a paper towel for this. Word to the wise, you'll find out in a few minutes. Um, this isn't the best application method. I have learned my lesson. <laughs> uh, but then I'm gonna tape all around the edges and I'm gonna pull out my transfer so that I can get it all lined up. This is the mini Buffalo plaid check. It's an 18 by 18, so this sucker is big. I went ahead and did all of my fuzzing. I'm gonna try my best to use like all the right words. So <laughs> um, I'm gonna get it all positioned, you know, where I want it to be. It's one of those things, since it's a circle, I mean, can it really be wrong? can it? I, I'm going to go with a can't. So, but I'm still trying my best to get it lined up as, as much as a what makes sense. And then we're going to just take our chalk paste in storm and we're just going to smudge it all over the place. Now this awesome uh, 18 by 18 transfer is available. And if you're interested in it, let me know. I would love to help you pick out some different things and really come with like a good, you know, a good selection of stuff. Now I'm going to let you know, obviously this transfer does not cost under $5, but uh, as a designer, it cost me 18 and you can get probably 10 uses at a minimum off of it. So I'm going to count it as costing me less than $2. Uh, maybe that's cheating, but I am not a rule follower. <laughs> I really am though. All right. So we're going to take the transfer off and I'm going to show you, I, I messed up a little bit on the wax. I did not buff it in as much as I should have. And I definitely needed to let it sit as well. I have since used the wax and done it successfully. So <laughs> I filled in a couple of spots um, that ended up having a lot of the uh, paste come off and then I'm going to sand it just to try to like get it to look right all together. And I, I did an, or I did my orbital sander over the whole thing to kind of get that really worn look. I still like the way it came out. I'm really happy. I just kind of let the crafts tell me what they wanted to be today. <laughs> and on the next one, I have a Dollar Tree pumpkin and uh, don't get mad at me. This was supposed to just be everyday farmhouse decor but I had to throw in a little bit of fall because there's so many beautiful fall DIYs out there right now. And I just needed at least a couple little touches of it in this video. Uh, so I do try my darndest to get this thing to stick in the middle, but it was not working. The gap wasn't the right size for those little, you know, beads. So what I'll do is I'll just put down a you know, a, a line of hot glue and then I'll put my beads down. I wasn't worried about them being even across the top. You know what I mean? Like I didn't mind them being a little bit off here and there. I kind of made sure they weren't too close. Like this one, I'm going a little bit lower. Some of the other ones will go a, bit, a little bit higher. I, I didn't want it to look like they were off on purpose. I wanted them to be off on, uh, you know, or I mean, I wanted them to look off on purpose, not to be off by accident. I think you know what I mean. <laughs> if you want to make them as even as possible, I would recommend starting your little string of beads at the bottom. If you do it from the bottom and go up to the top, you can kind of make sure you're getting the same number of them all the way around. And I think it'd be more even that way. Once we're done with that and everything's dried down, I'm going to just, you know, do a couple little touch ups here and there if it needs it. And once that is finished and those are good to go, we're going to take out our Waverly plaster chalk paint and we're going to do two, to two coats total. And especially on that first coat, what you want to do is really get in there in between all of the grooves, get your paintbrush really in there. I found that a flat paintbrush seemed to work the best. Once you've gotten your two coats on it, we're going to move on to the good old antiquing wax. When in doubt, and it's farmhouse, 
Just throw in some antique wax. There should be a slogan in there somewhere. I'm sure there's something in there for a slogan. <laughs> and I'm just gonna dry brush and pay really a lot more attention to where the beading is. And I'll still get in there and get on the sides too. I didn't want there to be like a real stark difference, but I really wanted to bring out that beadwork. And we're just, like I said, I'm, I'm just going in with it today. Everything's farmhouse. It's all gonna be a little bit rustic. And how could you not do a pumpkin in August if it's rustic. Here it is. It turned out really, really cute. I'm loving it. So like I said, today is a really fun playlist. All five under five. The playlist and all of our hosts will be linked for you below. So please make sure you go check it all out. Now I have one of these cutting boards. I have it saved from Easter. We're just gonna take all of the you know little pins off of the front side. And I'm honestly not too terribly worried about how I'm going about doing this because I'm not gonna use the front, I am gonna use the back, but I needed a flat surface. I'll give a full coat, uh, well, not even a full coat, a very messy coat of the Waverly chalk paint and plaster. I'm going to try, uh, you see at my first stroke of paint, I just didn't care. And then I was like, no, I should probably keep it somewhat in the same direction. And I got a little bit better. I'm using it like the very bottom of this bottle. That's crazy. This is like, that's my second bottle I've gone through. So you know, that means I'm using it. <laughs> and we're just going to go over all of it as best you can. Make sure you get along the sides and everything. I'm leaving some area uh, you know, not painted because I am and going to go over it once it's dried with my orbital sander, which you can do by hand too, however you, you know, want to go. And I've got my surface wax again. Like I said, I did a much better job on this one. I've noticed, I think that that sponge is just from Dollar Tree. It makes it a whole lot easier. I'm just going to give it a very nice, good coat, buff it in, and then I'm going to let it sit for at least 10 minutes. Now I've got this gorgeous transfer. It's called Kitchen Rules and it is from Chalk Couture, but not only that, but it is actually the Club Couture. What that is, is just a subscription service. It's $19.99 a month. You're gonna always get a eight by 10 transfer. It might be a full size one like this where it's the full sheet. It might be little parts here and there and it's it's adorable. I love this one. I could not help myself. I usually try just to put one chalk couture project in, but I couldn't help it. I had to use this one. Um, if you sign up for chalk couture or for club, the club in chalk couture, you're going to get this transfer and three paste this month in August. And there's a really great promo going on right now where you can get 50% off on, I think like three different surfaces if you want to pick them up. Um, that's a better price than I get as a designer. So I would definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested. And it's really fun because you don't know what you're going to get. So you're going to get something directly from them. And it's so much fun to be surprised. Here it is though, all done. See, it didn't get ruined this time. And I felt like it definitely needed a little something more. The kitchen rules part did not fit. So I was like, well, let me add some twine. When, when in doubt, you know, you're doing something that's farmhouse, you just throw some twine on it. Twine or antique wax. <laughs> and this is just some leftover twine you know, from like a previous project that I didn't use it on or something. So I'm not even going to count that in towards my cost. So again, the transfer and the paste is $20 a month. You use them like 10 times. So I'm calling this project like a three or so dollar project. It might be cheating, but that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Here it is though, all finished up. I absolutely love it. Please let me know if you're interested and I will send you all the details. So here is another thrifted item. This little guy came from the same thrift shop as the first one. And he was $2.99, $2.99. And I'm gonna take some Rust-Oleum paint in chiffon cream and I'm gonna do a full coat on like the bottom and the rim and then on the little uh, spokes. Is that what you would call those? The part in the middle between the bottom and the rim. <laughs> I do um, I do a pretty decent coat of it and if I miss parts I'm not real worried about it. Obviously if you want like full coverage on this spray paint might be the easier way to go about it just because you know those little you know thin pieces are going to be a lot harder to get with a paintbrush if you want it to be fully coated. And I'm going to use like just about every um, distressing method known to man now. <laughs> um, I've got it where it's still pretty damp, so I'm taking a rounded paintbrush 
and I'm going to get it wet and then I'm just going to go in and wet all of that paint and then I'm going to wipe it off with a paper towel. I don't know why I felt like I needed to do this much this this much distressing but I did. And now I'm going to take the wood tint from Folk Art in gray and I'm going to give it a full coating all over the place on that. Put a little on, wipe a little off. Put a little on, wipe a little off. I tell you what, this this little guy has it's, it's stressed. <laughs> it's not just de-stressed, it's stressed. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I'm just going to go through and do the whole thing in this. And then, um, yeah, you guessed it. We're going to go in some, some antique wax. I don't know. It's just with this piece, I could not get it to look the way I wanted it to. Like I want all of my projects to kind of flow together a little bit. There's a lot of different things and that I could have done with it and I don't know. It you never know. You may see it again in a video with yet another paint job. <laughs> so don't be surprised if you do. Uh just because I'm still not sure if I'm 100% in love with it. But I I mean, I like the overall look it uh, has with the projects. Here it is with some little style and a little candle. It's not a real candle. That would be ha an awful idea with the moss. And now I've got some little fox from the Dollar Tree that is part of one of those make your own ornaments and I am just going to Mod Podge some paper right on there some scrapbook paper and it's a really cute little buffalo plaid it's orange so it's cute for fall but still very farmhouse appropriate once it has dried I go around and I'm going to just start cutting all around the edges uh, I Felt like that was going to be the easiest option. It still wasn't easy. This little guy's got a lot of little grooves that are really hard to get into. But I was like, you know, at first I was like, well, maybe sandpaper would be the easiest. And then I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to get a teeny tiny little piece of sandpaper in between like the tail and the body. I just was like, yeah, this, this is never going to happen. So let me just trim it up and take, you know, I think this entire time that it took me to do it was probably like a solid five minutes. So <laughs> it took a little while so we're just gonna assume that I finished it all and we'll skip it. Alright see so yeah, I've all finished that up and what I'll do now is I'm just gonna get my little weeding tool and give him his little hole back. It's kind of a strange placement for it because it's in his head. It kind of alarms me a little bit but I'm just gonna do a coating of some antique wax on the back side so it doesn't look so like you know unfinished. Real quick just douse it into some antiques wax and wipe it off. Have you noticed a common theme here? Today I am loving on my antique wax. I think I do that anytime it's like a farmhouse video. I'm like, well, of course, antique wax. Do you guys want to see more modern farmhouse? I really haven't done one of those in a long while. And I'd love to know if you're interested in that. Let me know in the comments below. So I do give a little, just a little bit of detail all around the edge just to give, you know, some more definition. He's got a lot of really cute little furry details. You know, the tail, the tail is adorable. I don't know what it is. That big fluffy fox tail is just so stinking cute. Um, so of course we're just going to sand it down a little. Today was all about distressing. <laughs> uh, once I've gotten that, it's going to kind of tone down a couple of the little spots and still like give him a little like rougher look to him. He's one bad A Fox. Um, that's his name. Bad middle initial A last name Fox. I've decided. <laughs> and I am going to take out some of these beta garlands from the Dollar Tree keep your eyes out. It is a fall thing. I ordered it off of their website probably a month ago. Uh, they're not there anymore though. I looked the other day, they were not there. Uh, I'm going to just get uh, as many as I want on there and then we'll string it through our little fox with badly placed hole. Um, like I said, he's a bad A fox. That's his name. So I can't get in trouble with YouTube because I said that's his name. <laughs> Once it's all set, I'm just going to, you know, give it a good tug. And now we're going to make a tassel. If you've been here for a while, you know my tassels are nothing to write home about. But I think I'm getting a little bit better. Maybe not. You'll have to let me know if this looks like a better tassel than the ones you've seen in the past. I just string it around my hand uh, uh, several times. I don't count. I just go until it looks like the fullness level. And what's kind of nifty is on the bottom side of the beaded garland, it has a couple little pieces sitting there right ready for you to tie your tie to your tassel. I was like, well, gee, this just looks like it was made to be like this. And I'll take that leftover side of it and, you know, put it all the way around. And I'm not a fan of tying it just because I feel like I can never 
get it right. So I add just a tiny little bit of hot glue and I'll just push it down, kind of mush it all together. Mush, it's a technical term. Um, and then I will, you know, again, tie it again. I'll cut down some strings. I'll hot glue it. There's a lot of hot glue in, in this tasseling making business of mine <laughs> just because I always am like I'm sure it's gonna fall apart right it's just it's just twine one knot doesn't typically do it but there was not enough there to make two you know two not enough twine to do two knots without I don't know you guys know what I'm talking about it's getting late in the day I don't usually do my videos this late in the day <laughs> And I'll give it a little haircut, which I don't know that really helped very much, but that's there. There it is, all finished. He's so, so cute, little fox beaded garland. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that if you're interested in Chalk Tour, reach out to me on Instagram or my email. It's all listed for you below, and I will see you next time. <laughs>